Welcome to the Westcott Crochet Channel and welcome to my take on the classic flat cap. The construction is mostly straightforward when tackled stage by stage, save for a fiddly bit to form a rigid brim. Perhaps watch the video all the way through to check out the whole process before you crack on and have a go. I used a lightweight yarn which recommended a 4mm hook and I used a 2mm hook to create a more rigid fabric. As usual, thumbs up if you like this one, subscribe if you haven't and follow on Instagram if the fancy takes you. To begin, either slip knot, chain five, slip stitch into chain number one, and work all of these stitches on the first round into that little hole there, or Work a magic ring, grasp your yarn, wrap it around three fingers, up through the front, grab hold of the back, pull it through, twist it up, back into the back, and pull through your little loop there. And then all your stitches for the first round are worked into this ring and around this tail. So first stitch, either you can chain it a second chain, because that's technically a chain right there. And the first two chains there will then be your first stitch in place of a half double crochet. I'm going to work a standing half double crochet. And to do that, I go around and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop. I'm just going to unhook there and go back in the opposite direction and twist those loops. Then yarn over and pull through those two loops for a standing half double crochet. Then I'm going to yarn over, back in through the magic ring, pull back a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops for a regular half double crochet. I'm going to make 12 half double crochets in total into this magic ring. So that's one, two. If you've chained two, you need 11 half double crochets to go with your chain two. I have 12 half double crochets. I'm going to just pull on this end just to partially close this. I won't fully close it just now because it gives me a bit of fidget room. I'm going to find the first half double crochet, which is here, or your second of your chain two, and slip stitch into there to close. I will pull that completely closed later, but just for now, it gives you a little bit of room to work with. So for row two, I'm going to turn around. Now that's the slip stitch I've just worked, so don't work into that. This is my first stitch. And again, I'm going to work a standing half double crochet. If you're chaining two, I recommend you slip stitch into this area first and then chain two. So I'm going to work a standing half double in through the stitch, pull back a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop only. Just pull those up, out with my hook, back in in the other direction. Missed a bit. Yarn over and pull through the two loops. So that's one. Next stitch, I'm going to work three half double crochets. I'm going to mark the second of those three. Into the next three stitches, I'm going to work one half double crochet in each. Into the next stitch, I'm going to work three half double crochets. going to mark the second one. Next stitch, three half double crochets. Mark 
mark the second one. Next stitch, three half double crochets. Mark number two. Next three stitches, one half double crochet in each of the stitches. Next stitch, and it's just obscured ever so slightly by the um, slip stitch that I used to close the round. So just pull that side and work three half double crochets into there. Just got to find your way in. One. Two and a third. And mark number two. And to finish, I'm going to work an increase again. Now, normally I'd work that increase into stitch number one, but I found that made it look kind of bulky. So I'm actually going to go for the point in between the last stitch and the first stitch. You'll just find a point in between where you can pop two more stitches. That'll be clearer in person than it probably is on camera. Um, and it obviously becomes clearer as the, the thing gets bigger as well. So here I am, end of the round. Find my first half double crochet for your chain two. And slip stitch into there to close. So I've worked six lots of increases. Here, 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 here and here. So three at either end of what will eventually be an oval. So on to round three, turn around. Again, avoid a slip stitch. But again, if you are training to start, you need to slip stitch into this first stitch. I'm again going to work a standing half double. And then I'm going to work two double crochets into the next two stitches, so one in each. Sorry about all the clacking on the board, it's just the uh, stitch markers are unavoidable. So that's two. Next stitch is the marked stitch. Pop that out for a moment and work three half doubles into the marked stitch. And mark the center one. Now there'll be five stitches between here and the next marked stitch. I'm going to put one half double crochet into each of those five stitches. And I have the marked stitch, pop that out, three half double crochets into that marked stitch. And mark it, the centre one. Two stitches between here and the next marker, and I'm going to put double crochets into each of those. to the marked stitch, three half doubles into the marked stitch. Mark the centre, 
two doubles into the next stitches. So one in each and two. Another mark stitch, three half doubles into there. And mark the center one. Five half doubles up the side here. Mark stitch, three half doubles into here, and then mark the center one. And I've got two stitches left for half for double crochets. So one Second one is obscured by the slip stitch close, so just make sure you don't miss that one. And here I just need to work my final increase to close. And again, I'm not going to work that into the first stitch as you traditionally would. I'm going to pick this middle spot here, which isn't technically a stitch, but it just makes it look a whole heap better. So two into there for the increase, find my first stitch and slip stitch into there to close. Oops, dropped it. And there we go. So as mentioned, we're forming an oblong shape and these are the rounded ends. And these are the, going to be the two straightish sides here. Um, every time you arrive at a straight side, it's half double crochets between markers. And on the rounded edges, you're going to work three half double crochets every time you arrive at a marker and mark the middle one. And double crochets in between the increases. So here and here and here and here, double crochets, four spots, half doubles down the sides. Every round that you work, you'll add an extra two double crochets and an extra two half double crochets. So we had three half doubles that went to five, that'll go to seven, that'll go to nine, that'll go to 11 and so on. And then we had two, which will go to four, six, eight and so on. So just keep count so that you don't lose your way and start getting a misshapen oblong. Um, you've only got about um, a dozen or so rows to focus, um, but it's worth it. So each time, turn around, start again, work in the round, counting your stitches. Don't forget to work your two increases at the end before you slip stitch to close and just keep going until you get the size you need. Measure all the way around the head and divide that measurement by 3.14. The answer provides the measurement you need to work to for this stage. Your final rectangle actually needs to be a little bit larger, but we have one final round coming up to take care of that. Here I've worked 13 rounds and I'm two centimeters away from where I need to be. And those two centimeters will be made up in the next round, which will also sort out these pointy edges. So where I've been working the increases where you see here, I'm now going to move those increases to here and here and here and here. I'll just mark them up and I'll come back. So here are my new increase points all marked out. I haven't measured or counted. I've just eyeballed roughly thirds of the flat sections and then just put my markers in. It's important to put your markers in, otherwise you risk just breezing on past it and you miss your, uh, your increase point. So for this next round, it's all going to be worked in half double crochet. I will start with one stitch in the first stitch as always, work up to the marker where I'll add three, up to the next marker, add three, all the way around to the next marker, add three, and so on until the end. And make sure you don't work your extra two to close. You just literally just work your last stitch and then close. After that round, the edges are looking a lot less angular and I now have the measurement that I need. 
Next, I'm going to go around again and just put one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. So after that round, the stitch markers are back. I'm going to start making a hat shape. So this is going to be the back and this is going to be the front. And at the back here, I've marked out roughly halfway along what was the former flat edge and same on this side. And for me, it's just 12 stitches. I've added the marker into another 13 and done the same on the other side. So just eyeball your center roughly and then just count out your stitches and make sure they're in the same place on either side. On the front markers here, I folded in half and added a marker at the halfway point. I then just moved it forward by three stitches. Then I just count the stitches and make sure that it's the same point on the other side. From this next round, the back section around here will be worked in double crochet and the front section around here will be worked in single crochet. And I'll be working decreases now at these points in the back and every three rows around the front. So I'm going to start my round with a standing double crochet or you can chain three in place of that. I've just pulled up my loop to the height of a double crochet and I hold the loop on the hook with my finger, wrap the loop around my hook to form loop number two, still holding loop number one, in through my first stitch and pull back loop number three, still holding loop number one, yarn over, pull through two, I can let go now, yarn over and pull through those last two loops. I'm going to put one double crochet in each stitch up to the marked stitch. Okay, so that's one stitch in each up to the marked stitch. I'm just going to pop that out for a second. This stitch that's marked and the one after it are going to be worked together to form a decrease. So yarn over for the first stitch, in through the stitch, pull back a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over for the next stitch, in through the stitch, pull back a loop, yarn over, pull through two, three loops left, yarn over, pull through all three. And then I'm going to mark that stitch. So now I'm going to do one double crochet into each stitch until I get to within two of this next marker. I've worked my double crochets to within two stitches of this next marker. I'm just going to work these next two stitches as half double crochets and that just steps down nicely from doubles to singles, which this next section is going to be worked in. So here I'm at the marked stitch. Okay, so from this point to the next marker, I want to work single crochet and I'm going to work decreases on this next round and I want to reduce this stitch count around here by a quarter. So I'm going to work every fourth stitch along with the third to make it disappear. So I'll work, well, I'll start with a decrease and then I'll work two on their own and then the third and the fourth stitch will be worked together. So start on with that. Out with the marker for now. And I'll work the first two stitches together. So in through the first, pull back a loop. In through the second, pull back a loop. Three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. And don't forget to put your marker back in. Then I'll work one, two individual stitches. And then I'll work three and four together as one stitch. And I'm just going to do that the whole way around. So one stitch, two stitches set separately, and then one and two together as a decrease. I'm going to do that, do that, sorry, the whole way around up to this next marker. So here I'm at the next marker. I've just worked two together and I've got two stitches left. So I'm just going to work those on their own. So one and two separately. And then I'll mark that last stitch. So here I need to work two half double crochets, one in the next and one in the next. And then I'm on to double crochets again. So I'll work double crochets to within one stitch of this marked stitch because the marked stitch needs to be worked together with the one prior to it. When I started the round, it was the marked stitch and the one after. To close the round, it's the marked stitch and the one before. 
So you're working away from the center point with your, with your decreases. So double crochet up to within one stitch of the mark stitch. Here I am, one stitch prior to the mark stitch. I'm going to work that one and the mark stitch together to make one stitch. And then mark that new stitch. Okay, just close off the round, one stitch in each, slip stitch to close. So after that round, I hope you can see the front edge here is just curling under. From here, I'm going to continue working decreases to create the shape of the hat. Um, the decreases at the back will be constant. Every round gets a decrease, same as I've just done on the last round. So it's the marked stitch and the one after on this side, the one before and the marked stitch on this side. For the single crochet portion, I'm only going to work the decreases every third row. So that was one just there, so that means I'll need to work the next two without any decreases at all. And then the third one will have decreases again, fourth and fifth, none at all, and so on. I'll have all together three decrease rows on this single crochet section, um, with again two rows not decreased in between. Um, and every time I work another decrease row, I'll add another space in between the decreases. So where I had two and then a decrease last time, I'll have three and then a decrease and then four and then a decrease for the next one. So I'll be working another eight rows on this, so nine in total. So round one had decreases for the single crochet section, two and three will not. Round four will have decreases for the single crochet section, five and six will not. Seven will have decreases, eight and nine will not. So always decreasing at the back. After that last nine rounds, I now have this little shape. So it just comes up and out at the back and folds in at the front. Okay, next row, I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn. And I'm just going to single crochet up to the marked stitch. Here at the marked stitch, you can take that out, you don't need it anymore. I'm going to work the next two stitches together, so same as I've been doing but with single crochet this time. Now I'm going to continue single crochet one in each stitch until I get to within three stitches of the next marked stitch which marks the front section. So three stitches before I'll stop leaving those three stitches unworked. Here with three stitches to go before the marked stitch I can now take out the marker and on the next three stitches and beyond I'm going to work around the post of the stitch with a front post single crochet. So around the post, pull back a loop, yarn over and pull through for a single crochet. So that's a double crochet post. This is a half double crochet post. The next one. The next one is another half double crochet post. Remember we we're doing two to taper down. And then from here it's single crochet post, but I'm still going to work around them all the way across the front section. So I'll keep doing this until I get to the marked stitch. So I'll work around that post, plus three more. I've worked all the way across the front of the hat. I did put a marker back into the first front post stitch so that I can easily identify that on the way back. From here, I'm going to turn and slip stitch back into the stitches I've just made. I'll just zoom in. Okay, so that was the last stitch I just worked. I'm actually going to skip over that one and work from the next one and just slip stitch all the way back across these single crochet stitches I've just worked in the front posts. When I get to the end, I'll slip stitch two together. The end being the first front post stitch that I worked. Last two stitches, I go into the first and pull back a loop, into the second, pull back a loop and pull that loop through the last two loops there. I'm 
going to continue working rows on this brim section now. The only stitch marker that needs to stay in place is this guy over here because I've still got to do a decrease there um, to mirror what happened over on this side when I started this, well, essentially this round. The round does eventually complete, but after I've worked a few rows on the brim. So keep that in place and work that decrease at the end. But this next row is a little complicated um, because I'm going to be working a slightly different single crochet stitch. I'm going to encompass the slip stitch row I've just worked and work into the single crochet stitches on the row prior to that. So it just makes a thicker stitch so that the brim can stand out on its own. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to double up the stitches in the middle section. So I need to count how many I have, how many slip stitches I just worked, which for me was 42 divided by three, just roughly, doesn't have to be exact, but divided by three, I get 14. So I'm going to work 14 on their own. I'll double up for 14 and then I'll work 14 on their own. The first two, I'm going to, well, I'm actually going to skip the first one. So that counts as one of my 14. So I'm actually starting with stitch number two. And at the end, I'll be doubling up and um, decreasing by one at the end. So working two together. So again, that's 13 and 14. Just make sure you count those as well. So as I say, to start with, I'm going to skip stitch number one and I'm not going in through the tops of the stitches up here. I'm actually digging deep and going into the bottom down here. So underneath that whole row and it's right down underneath into your single crochet stitch from before. So I'm just going to get that out, sorry. So number one, I'm going to skip over. I'm going to go straight for number two. And as I say, that's number two of my 14. And we've got a bit of a baggy loop there. There we go. So then I've got three, four, five. And I'll just count out my 14 off camera and come back. So that's my 14 solo stitches. I'm now going to work 14 and add two into each point. So exactly the same spot, one and two. So that's number one, one and two for number two, one and two for number three. And again, I'll just count mine off camera and come back. So I worked my doubled up section in the middle and I've carried on working my individual stitches for 12, so I've got 13 and 14 to work together. And through one, and through the second, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now I'm going to turn, I'm going to skip that first stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch all the way back again, one in each, making sure I pick up all of these tiny little stitches on this doubled up section. So it's a little bit fiddly, uh, just pick your way across, one stitch in each, and then two together at the end. Back at the other end, two slip stitches together. Pull that through the two slip stitches there. Okay, so we've got this 100 tiny little stitches, it seems. So I've just got to pick my way across this way again. Skip stitch number one into stitch number two underneath the slip stitch row and into the single crochet row prior to that. And if you can just see, I hope you can see where I'm putting my hook. Let me just take this off for a minute. It's not the stitch tops are up here on the slip stitch row. I'm actually going in through here to lower down beneath. And you can, if you pull your work apart, you can just see the gaps where you need to go. worked up a few more so hopefully you can see what it looks like after you've worked the stitches correctly it just wraps that whole row into your single crochet stitch back and front so I'm just going to continue now putting one stitch in each all the way across don't lose any of your little stitches that you've added in so just be careful to get all of those it's tiny I know and it's fiddly but get every one of them and then two together at the end 
I've gone all the way across. The last two have worked together to form one stitch. I think I got them all. It's much easier to do it in green yarn than it was in the black that I worked with initially. Um, so I'm just going to keep going back and forth now. I'm going to slip stitch back, skipping stitch number one, slip stitch all the way across, two together at the end, turn, skip stitch number one, single crochet back all the way around, one stitch in each, two together at the end, until this section matches out to the size of this section. So your slip stitch rows are just standard slip stitch and then your single crochet rows must incorporate that slip stitch row, so dig deep. I've worked my brim to within about the width of two single crochet row away from matching this top edge, so you can see. And I've just slip stitched across the front there over to this side. And at this point, I'm going to incorporate the slope sections a little more so they're not quite so stand out and different. So I'm going to complete my slip stitch row down this edge. And I'm just going to put one slip stitch at the end of each single crochet row. So there are no stitches to work into. You've just really got to sort of pick your place and commit to it. So nice and loose so that I don't distort my work. So that was number one. Number two. And then I've got one, two, three, row three. And four. And then there was a fifth one just there. So I'll just pop another one in there. Okay, and then just to anchor it, I'm just going to slip stitch into this side stitch here. With that done, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to single crochet back across those slip stitches. Again, I don't have the nice stitches to work around. I don't have that single crochet row below. So I'm just going to have to estimate the depth and just dig a little bit deeper and make sure that I work five single crochet stitches up this slope here. I'm just following roughly the um, slip stitches I've just worked. I do not want to come through. There we go. And that's the end one. So I'm back at the top now and I can just carry on working my single crochet row as I normally would have. I've gone a little bit too deep there. I've gone a bit crazy. So just into here. And around the row as usual. I'll work all the way across the front and I'll come back. I've gone all the way across the top with the single crochet row. If you can see now, this corner is nicely incorporated, so it just looks like it's a neat part of the rest of the brim. I'm going to do the same thing over here and just single crochet down one at the end of each single crochet row and just sort of, as I say, digging an estimated depth to work that the same look as I've got for the rest of the brim. And five to match the other side. From here, I'm going to keep going around with my single crochet row for the rest of the hat, remembering to make my decrease into the stitch prior to the marked stitch and to the marked stitch. So those two will work together and finish the round. Okay, I've just completed that round. No more stitch markers now, they're all gone. At this point, try on the hat and make sure that you've got a nice snug fit. If not, on this next round, just work some decreases around this back section, as many as you need to do to make it fit securely. And um, for me, I'm all set. I'm just going to chain one, turn around and work all the way around one single crochet in every single stitch. So that's me all the way around for the final time. I'm just going to slip stitch stitch number one to close. Just work that slip stitch quite loosely because I'm going to cut my arm, pull 
pull that through carefully. So don't tighten that stitch. And thread this end onto a yarn needle. And then I just go, I'm coming out of the center of the slip stitch I just worked. I'm going to skip over the one behind it and go round through both loops of the one after that. And just pull that through. And then I go back down into the slip stitch that I worked. Pull that through again, just gently. Don't want to make anything too tight. And that just creates an invisible seam there. And then I can just make a little knot here. Just to secure. And weave that end away. I just have one other end to weave in. And in addition to that, the only thing I have left to do is to find the center of this brim and attach it to the center of the top here. And you can either just do that with a yarn needle and some yarn or add a press stud, as I've done here. Once you're all done, you will have to manipulate the shape a little bit because obviously you've been squishing it down quite a lot whilst you're working the stitches. Um, so give it a minute to, um, to take shape and just sort of stretch it and pull it into position. And then once you've got it there, it usually stays put. Um, and then you're done.